We're getting there. Um, if you have a sharp eye, you will notice in the program of VivaTech this year, all across the board, we have a special stage for Tech at Africa. This morning, President Kagame of Africa was here with President Macron. And we have the, it's not up on the board yet, but we, will, we have what you're about to hear now, an interesting roundtable about the situation of Africa and technology and what's happening, what's not happening, and the whole question of whether it can, how, it, how technology in Africa will develop. That's not an accident. One of the big sponsors of VivaTech, you will also notice if you are careful, is Orange, the big global telephone company, which just happens to be very interested in Africa. And Stefan Richard, the CEO, is personally interested in it. So we have a kind of interesting confluence. And Orange came to us this year and said, could you please increase the Africa component in the programming? And so I think, are we all set? Let's bring them out. Uh, to... There we go. Thank you very much. Uh, Fabian Schmidt Indeed. at the end, who is the high tech and media reporter for Les Echo is going to be leading the discussion, and she will introduce the okay. panelists. So without further ado, Roundtable Tech for Africa. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm Fabian Schmidt. I'm uh, uh, chief of the high tech and media section of, uh, the, uh, for the daily economic newspaper Les Echo in France. So we're here to, t to, t to talk about tech for Africa. And um, as you probably know, um, Africa is one of the main topics um, of this third edition of uh, VivaTech. You can see Africa everywhere in, uh, at the show. Um, we have here a hundred uh, African startups um, and uh, several countries like uh, Morocco or Tunisia have their own pavilion here at Divatec. With 300 innovation centers uh, in uh, its uh, 54 countries, Africa has the potential to become uh, one of the next hubs of uh, global innovation. Africa Tech is um, actually booming. And the continent uh, is today a kind of uh, new digital frontier driven by uh, digital natives, 995 million mobile subscribers, and 362 million of internet users. So we're going to speak about the tech ecosystem in Africa about innovation, of course, and uh, how startups find funding. And the question is also, what will be the next evolution in Africa, and uh, who will lead it? So um, to answer those questions, uh, I'm with Stéphane Richard, chairman and CEO of Orange, Emerald Abdella, Regional Director of For Africa Initiative for Microsoft. Sina Lanson, Minister of Post and Digital Economy for the Government of Togo. And Chun Nyang, author, social entrepreneur, and a political strategist. So we'll begin with you, uh, Stéphane Richard. Orange uh, is present in uh, 18 countries in Africa. And uh, uh, this is a place where you help startups and uh, where you have uh, 120 million customers. So how would you describe uh, the tech landscape in Africa? Would you say um, 
for example, that uh, there is a real ecosystem, a real African ecosystem? Well, the first uh, thing probably to um, say about Africa is that it is a connected continent today. If you take uh, the mobile penetration, it is twice higher in Africa than in India, for instance. So to some extent, Africa uh, is already a connected continent. Of course, there, there is still uh, some uh, infrastructure to build. Um, we have also to uh, get some uh, smartphones uh, at uh, a price that will uh, enable uh, the digitization uh, to, to spread uh, much, much more in Africa. But um, it's, it's a very good start and a very good uh, uh, situation today to, uh, to contemplate uh, a very promising uh, uh, future. Now, regarding, um, regarding tech, we, we have very interesting uh, things, especially because there, are, there is a number of areas where uh, uh, digital tools uh, can provide uh, really uh, game-changing uh, solutions to development issues like education, like agriculture, like e-commerce, like content, and a number of uh, other things. So we see today a number of uh, startups in Africa. The, the quantity of capital that is invested in the tech in Africa is still too small. Mm -hmm. It's in a range of $400 uh, million dollars today. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can do much more. That is the reason why uh, Orange has decided to uh, uh, first identify and coach uh, startups in Africa through acceleration programs called or Orange Fab. Today we have uh, more than 30 startups within our Orange Fab uh, programs in Africa. Second, we have decided also to open a special uh, corporate fund, Orange Digital uh, Ventures for Africa, with 50 million as a first uh, step. Mm -hmm. And um, what we want to do clearly is to be one of the players, as a telco, of course, but also as an investor, uh, to, uh, to really promote innovation, uh, identify, help, uh, open doors to, uh, to startups. We see uh, a growing number of young entrepreneurs, a growing number of, uh, of young people having uh, uh, great ideas, um, and there is still uh, a lot of things to do uh, in areas like e-commerce, for instance, where uh, Africa is probably uh, less advanced than uh, other areas in the world. So for us, it's clearly one of our priorities uh, to invest in, in uh, innovation. What do you think, Cho um, Nyang, um, about uh, this landscape? Uh, take uh, in Africa, you are an entrepreneur yourself. Um, uh, how do you explain there's, uh, this, uh, this boom of uh, startups in Africa? Well, thank you. This boom of startups in Africa is a response to Africans finding solutions of some of the biggest problems that we have in the continent. Africa today is in the crossroads. Uh, our generation uh, understand today the need to find solutions that we've been fighting with for a long time. Just like Europe after the World War, uh, where you had the Industrial Revolution, where young Europeans from across this continent had to face some of the biggest challenges across the world to rebuild their nations. People say that uh, in here, when you have, there is a problem in Africa, there's always a solution, and, that's, that's and there's always a startup behind. Is that true? That's where I'm coming into. And today, for a very long time after independence, our funding fathers have created an opportunity for us, the new generation, has passed us the torch. And today we have the greatest opportunity here with technology to transform drast drastically Africa. That's why you see many things is happening through leapfrogging. The things that we didn't know in America, 
in France, in other countries about technology. It's happening in Kenya with Mempesa. It's happening in my home country, Lagwari, a young Senegalese creating opportunities to the smallest, remotest villages to make sure that people like us, the farmers, I am a farmer through Jeff's zone of my project, where today farmers had problems to just have access to the market. But now from my farm and farmers around me, they can just buy through Orange with the technology, with our telephones, or through Wari with mobile technologies from their telephones. They can bank through their telephones. And this is not only on the areas of farming, but also on education, as he said, on the health systems, and also on uh, governments and policies that's helping us today to transform the continent. This is in response to what you're asking about a, a time for everyone here who's thinking about uh, coming to Africa and investing in Africa. This is the greatest time that you can have to have the greatest returns, just like companies like Orange is doing in the continent. It is a remarkable continent. A lot of things is happening today, and it's not going to stop. It's going to continue to move forward because you have a diaspora and a new generation that travel the world that understand what it takes to change the continent. Before I give you the mic, though, I will just say quickly, for everyone coming to invest in Africa, just like you guys in Europe and in America when you're transforming your continents, you need outsiders, you need opportunities, you need partners to come and help. We, too, need supporters. We need uh, partners from Europe, from America, from Asia to come in and support what we're trying to do in the continent. But I just say that we need it in the level where it can be a win-win situation. I don't think it's allowed anymore in Africa where is that time is gone where you can just come do Africa and do business in Africa in any kind of way. Do business in Africa with no social responsibilities. We're not being able to follow the rules as we do in so many African countries. Those days are gone. It's a new Africa. It's a new generation that understands exactly what it takes to transform our countries and solve the problems that we have. And we need it with you in the win-win situation. Thank you. So Emerald, Emerald Abdella, um, Africa needs uh, partners, uh, said Tune. Uh, Microsoft is a kind of partners uh, of Africa. Can you explain uh, what is uh, For Africa initiative for Microsoft? Sure. Thank you. Uh, let me start off by first echoing what he said, um, but in context of what we've done and sort of following uh, our CEO who just did a great session here. Look, Africa today is the greatest best kept secret around technology. So really, if there's an opportunity for anyone who's trying to grow business, do it the right way with social impact, it's an opportunity for anyone who's interested to come in. We at Microsoft have been investing in Africa actively around innovation, skills development, affordable access for the last five years. We've brought on board about 500,000 SMEs online, trained over 775,000 youth, and more importantly, really helped drive the ecosystem of startups to really grow. Because look, there's an element of innovation that everyone talks about, which is nice and great. But how do you actually grow meaningful businesses? Because they have to go from an idea to a business that is viable, that can grow from Togo to Senegal to then eventually Europe. So that's the type of, of scalability and approach that we're taking. Now, all of that, of course, embedded in the right technology with the right skill support to really help transform the journey of the companies, but also transform Africa as well. Um, so part of our commitment and our continued investment is really in bringing sort of the, the best new technologies that we have in Africa in the right context that can actually change the landscape of Africa, whether it's in agriculture, whether it's in health, whether it's in education. What is our responsibility, but also our commitment in making sure that we drive that uh, transformational journey? Sina. Sina Lawson, you're a minister um, for the government of uh, Togo. Um, how do African states react to the multiplication of startups and uh, how do they help them to grow and uh, what kind of uh, initiative uh, emerge? So thank you, thank you for the question. The first thing we have to um, focus on is access to infrastructure 
access to high-speed internet. And the way African countries, African states have been working on that was first through direct investment. In Togo, for example, we deployed high-speed internet fiber in universities, in the University of Lomé and the campus of the University of Cara in the north part of the country, and we linked both uh, universities with fiber. We created a digital library. We also work, of course, with the private sector. We have uh, Orange here uh, working, and I'm sure that Orange in the countries where they're present, they deploy uh, 3G, 4G, high-speed uh, internet using mobile technology. So that's the first, uh, the, the, the first way government help access to infrastructure. The second is to create a legal and regulatory framework. Uh, in order to promote uh, e-commerce in Africa, we need to have better regulations. And in Togo, we adopted a law, the law for digital um, and uh, electronic transactions to promote e-commerce. We did even more. It's very important today we have lots of entrepreneurs and the government of Togo decided that 20% of all public procurement should go to young entrepreneurs and uh, women. This is a very voluntary, voluntary policy. Uh, we want to be very proactive in helping our young entrepreneurs. But you know, it's also important to say that when you talk about entrepreneurship, when you talk about innovation, you're talking about people, you're talking about their skills. And one way government needs to be, uh, uh, again, proactive is to create and to train a new uh, skill set, the new workforce uh, of tomorrow. And by a skill set and workforce, I'm thinking, for example, of uh, creating generations of uh, data scientists, data architects, all these new jobs. And it's very important to be here today because I see uh, companies uh, like Andela, I see companies that, uh, like We Think Code uh, that have created uh, schools, coding schools. These are areas where governments and our government want to be much more reactive and we want to partner with um, people who have initiatives that can really uh, enable us to better train our workforce. Because this morning, uh, talking about Rwanda, it was said that 70% of Rwandans have, uh, are less than 35 years old. And this reality is true for Rwanda, but it's also true for all of, uh, all of Africa. So, uh, any uh, one of you, if you come to Africa, you will see that you see lots and lots of young people in the streets because three-fourths of all Africans are less than 35 years old and we need to train them to make sure that we create people who can start their companies, who can find jobs and are not going to be uh, looking for jobs because the training is not adequate. John, you said that um, um, uh, African uh, technological innovation will transform the, the continent in the future. Can you it develop this is, point? It is already transforming the continent. We have the youngest population in the world. As you just said, more than 70% of young people, of the people of Africa, are young under 35 years old today. We also have some of the fast growing economies in the world, today in the entire world. But it means nothing to me, and I think to many people, if we have the fastest growing economy, and we have the youngest population, the greatest continent to, in, to invest today, when you talk about return, when the basic needs of Africans are not met, when young people don't have decent education, when you're sick and you go to the hospital, you cannot see a doctor. When 600 million Africans are in, in the dark today, which is pushing us actually to do the acorn lighting Africa, to try to bring energy in the remotest or the farthest villages of the continent. It also doesn't mean nothing to me that we are the fastest and maybe leapfrogging across the world when it comes to technology. If 
our women working hard in those farms cannot have access to market. This is our challenges of the new generation of Africa. How can we make sure that when we talk about growth, Senegal or Mali or Ivory Coast, etc., they are on 6 or 7% of growth as the World Bank or the FME talk about. It is so well helping the economies, the countries, or the, whoever is investing in those countries. If you go to those hotels in Africa, people are making trans actions millions of millions of dollars. But if you walk or drive 10 miles away from the capitals, people are struggling to find one dollar to eat a day. How can we make sure that growth that we're talking about, that billions of dollars living Africa, benefits the children of Africa first of all, before anybody? How can we make sure that our children being born in those continents can have a decent life as we do my children in the United States or your children here in Europe. This is the biggest challenge for me. And if we cannot answer those questions, no matter what the technology do, if it doesn't clo close the disparity, the disparity between the have so much and the so have nuts, then there is no success to me. So we gotta find a playing level field where money and business and technology and opportunities in Africa can support the Senegalese or the African lambda so they can have access and opportunities as everyone in their own countries. And I can give you so many examples. If you go to countries such as mine, billions of dollars are being invested in highways, in roads, in technology and etc. But then you go to the universities, millions of young people scrambling down, looking for opportunities, or just a dollar to eat at the school. When they get out with a degree, some of them stay 10, 15 years just to find jobs. This is some serious concerns. And until we create an opportunity of economy of where everyone has an access, everyone has an opportunity, everyone can be able to have a decent life like we have in Europe and the United States, there will always be a gap, and there is always going to be not only disparities, but problems that we endure in our countries here in the West and also there in Africa. So to answer to your question, there is a challenge that's not only being faced by us Africans coming in to find solutions for our problems, but also to you investors that are coming in to our countries. You know better here in, in Europe that there is some sense of responsibilities for companies to do when they come to countries. And I talked about it earlier to the DG of Orange which is the, the responsibility of companies to make sure they invest in those areas mm -hmm. that they do business in. Not only to do business and take the money to bring it back to France or other countries, but also to invest in schools, in health, in education, in opportunities. So make sure that we transfer the skills to those young people and they can help to create more opportunities for Africa and also for your investors here in Europe. I think you should also run for president. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Should I continue or I'm done? Maybe, maybe, maybe uh, Stéphane Richard no could uh, answer. Um, th there's a lack of investment in, uh, in, um, in startup in, uh, in Africa. Right. And uh, 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 startup uh, begin seduce investors, but. Um, um, the amount invested remain uh, very far from uh, uh, the United States and the European level. Do you think it will uh, change in the future? Well, w w what I can say first is that Africa is a priority for Orange. It has been um, for us uh, a, a key challenge, a key priority for the past 20 years. We have invested a lot in Africa. We have made heavy losses for years. And today we, we are investing over 20% of our, of our revenues in Africa, uh, in the range of 1.6 billion euros every year. Number two, nothing will be possible in Africa in terms of digital transformation if uh, some people are not able to build the infrastructure that is needed, of course, to sustain this digital transformation, the networks and to begin with, the mobile networks. We expect 
the mobile internet traffic to be multiplied by 15 in the next three years. Can you imagine the kind of technical and financial challenge that it is? Who is going to do this? Who is going to invest and to uh, bet on this part of the digital uh, revolution? Of course, ourselves, the carriers, the telcos. Um, we are ready to do this, of course, because we think that there is a, a long-term return not only on our connectivity business, but also because we want to be a global actor, a global player in the digital world, uh, in new areas like such as mobile banking, such as energy, such as content, for instance, or e-commerce. Uh, number three, I would like to say very uh, simply and very kindly that in my view, the development of Africa will need foreign investment will need foreign companies like Orange, and I would be very pleased to see more foreign companies coming from the US, coming from Asia, coming from Europe, to invest massively in Africa. But so is it need, really good business to invest in Africa for such uh, big companies? Africa today, in terms of prospects of economic growth, mm -hmm. uh, demography, and all the opportunities that uh, are offered today by digitization is, in my view, one of the best areas to invest. But, but Africa needs to realize and to keep in mind that, of course, everyone needs this foreign investment to come to Africa. We need to have, and uh, Mrs. De the Minister of Togo made it very clear, attractive framework for investment. And to be honest, I don't think that it is by questioning the role of the big international companies that Africa is going to make progress. So the first point is to uh, create and to sustain the most attractive framework possible for Africa. And finally, I totally agree with you by saying that a company like Orange cannot be only uh, in Africa to make business, to make profit, of course, it is necessary. Because once again, the future of Africa will, will need companies like Orange making business and making profit, okay? But in the same time, we have a, a huge responsibility in those countries, and that is the reason why we are participating very heavily in a number of actions. For instance, in education, we have opened in Ivory Coast, um, uh, an institute uh, focusing on data skills with uh, L'Ecole Polytechnique in France a few weeks ago. We have uh, now uh, been developing some coding schools in a uh, few countries, especially in Senegal. And we will put a lot of resources, a lot of human also uh, commitments in uh, all those actions, meaning that we see our presence, our role in Africa in a very different way uh, from what we can do in uh, other parts of the world, in Europe, for instance. We have foundations in every country, very active, doing, I think, very useful things. We have helped more than 150,000 uh, women in Africa uh, to uh, help them to access to uh, digital tools and so on. So yes, definitely, we have a very different and very global responsibility being in Africa, but never forget that the development in Africa will need companies, foreign companies, European companies, American companies, Asian companies ready to invest massively in Africa. Maybe we can have the, yeah. the point I, of view of um, if, if I Microsoft I on that point, please. Yeah. If I may quickly jump in on that. Um, the numbers are, not, are, are leading us to really look at Africa from a business, but also from a social impact. It makes good business sense today to invest in Africa. And I think as, as Orange, as Microsoft, and any other company that we're looking at, look, the opportunity and the growth that we have in some of these markets are really truly at the forefront of what we see in terms of growth uh, around the world. Today in Africa, there are over 450 companies that are making over a billion dollar a year. 
a billion dollar a year. So yes, you can definitely make money, but you can do it by also transforming the lives of a student, of an SME, of an FMCG company. So those opportunities are really there. Now, are there areas that we should probably look at improving? Absolutely. In Europe today, you have one economic zone. In Latin America and South America, you have two economic zones. In Africa, you have over six of them. So being able to trade from Kenya to Tanzania to Senegal is an extremely daunting task. Now, from a policy making, is that something that we as Africans are thinking about? Absolutely. President Kagame is leading the forefront of it with Transform Africa that took place, but also with the trade agreements. Once we do that, there is no reason why today, not just us Africans looking at investing, I do agree it should be led and invested heavily from Western uh, investors, but it's also something that's being done by Africans as well. I, and I, and I want to make sure that that's really in place. Africans today are looking at technology and as a startup, as a real growth engine for transforming our economies, our people, and the continent. So hand in hand, I think it's definitely a task that's being done. But more importantly, I want this audience, and I want you to know that Africans are aware of it, we're ahead of it, and we're definitely making the policies in place, changing, upscaling ourselves, but also driving competition in the way that we should be uh, able to compete with the rest of the world. Thank you. Sina, what can African states do to attract investors? Uh, I'll answer your question, but I, I have, to, I have to, to say something which I think is very important. You know, the past five years in Togo, mobile penetration, high-speed mobile penetration has grown 760%. And I think it's very important to understand this, to understand the potential of, uh, and all the opportunities that that kind of exponential growth can bring. Uh, the other very important uh, thing to understand when uh, talking about Africa is that we Africans have a unique way to uh, do things, uh, to use technology. And I want to uh, mention uh, the an initiative that we launched in Togo, which is CISO. CISO is a, an initiative to bring solar panels to rural areas. And we have a unique uh, business model, which is to use a mobile payment platform so that people would pay, repay for their solar panels on a daily basis. And this is made possible using mobile technology. So this is an African way of doing things. And we have other ways. I can talk to you about another initiative developed use with the private sector to distribute uh, uh, subsidies to the poorest farmers to enable them to buy fertilizers. So these are unique uses that are made possible by uh, our uh, uh, young entrepreneurs developing relevant applications. And we as state, what we do is that we have needs and you create businesses because there are needs and there are people who are willing to pay for whatever solutions you, you bring them. So as government, we need to uh, enable these uh, entrepreneurs to develop the applications and to be able to sell it to us if we need them and, and create that kind of uh, emulation, that kind of challenge. So I, th I think it's an example, uh, it's a Togolese example, but you have this type of examples throughout Africa. And today I wanted to uh, say hi to, I, I came uh, in Paris with uh, 10 young entrepreneurs from Togo. I want to say hi to them. They have developed uh, great applications and I think that it's very important to come to um, VivaTech and events such as VivaTech to showcase uh, their, their, their ability to innovate. Can I jump in on that? Yeah. Let me, let me just quickly uh, piggyback to what the uh, CEO of Orange just uh, talked about when it comes to um, Africa needing foreign investors to come invest massively in Africa. And I agree with you. Uh, like here in Europe, as I talked about in the beginning, you needed the American money as a German Marshall Fund to come and support Europe to develop. And until today, you got foreigners that's coming here to invest massively. Just walk around the Champs-Elysees. 
most of those boutiques and everything there is owned by the Middle East. The Middle Easterns are coming here to invest. Chinese are coming, the United States, everybody. But you're doing something that's very spectacular, which is you made sure the core of your economy is controlled by France. And I don't think you will let that go because it comes to become serious when you cannot control your economy at all. In Africa today, what I'm saying to you is that, and this is for Africans in the room here, we need everybody to come to invest. We need your money. We need your transfer of knowledge. We need everything you got to give us when it comes to an opportunity to build our continent. But we cannot allow the core of our economies in Africa to be controlled by foreign investment. Then our economy becomes an artificial economy where the money comes and go out and cannot help build our schools. So Africans in this room, I'm telling you today that I've traveled the world and I've seen countries that's been built. I have not seen one country that's been built by foreigners or the World Bank or FME. But I've seen countries like Singapore, countries like Malaysia, countries like here in France, after the war, in England, in the United States where I live, that's only been built by the children of those countries. Until we say we Africans take the control of our continent with the help of our partners who are coming in in a win-win situation, with the right leaders in place, then we will not develop the continent and that will not happen. We'll be dreaming. But we can do it if we come ourselves and control the core of our economy. And everyone coming to invest have to abide by the social responsibilities that is put upon under them. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. This will be the last word Thank you. for this conference. Thank you all. That Thank was you. great. Thank you very much. Mesdames, Monsieur, Messieurs, merci, merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Okay.